family and friends we're so glad to have you if you haven't pressed that like or share button go ahead and do so right now and let's go to God in prayer Father God in the name of Jesus we thank you for today God we thank you for life health and strength God we thank you for getting us through this week Father God we thank you for healing protecting and delivering us this week God thank you for the struggles God and thank you for the accomplishments God we ask that you continue to protect our families bless our homes provide food for us and God just be a shield that you've always been God in Jesus mighty name we do pray amen I've been saying this a few times. If you are at home, push the share button. Let somebody know that it's time to give God the praise. Come on, come on, come on. If you're in your home, wherever you are, I need you to stand up and join in with us. Don't sit on your couch this morning, but find a place to praise them. Come on, I find a place to praise them. Find a place to praise them. Hey, it might be in your kitchen, but come on, do a step. Find a place to praise him. Find a place to praise him. Find a place to praise him. 
amen, amen. Hallelujah. Welcome to David Chapel's worship experience today. We thank you for allowing us to come into your room, your home, and to share this experience with you. Turn to your Bible, Matthew 22, and I'll be preaching from that today. But during the meantime, get on Facebook, YouTube. Let us know that you're there. Take some photographs, put them in that uh, location there, and we will join in with you in this worship experience. Again, thank you for being with us this day. time for tithes and offering as we worship God in our giving. As 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 7 reminds us, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. As we pause to offer our gift, we have four ways to give right now or at any time during the week. One, you may drop off your giving at our mail slot located on the MLK side of our church. Two, text DCMBC to 77977 from your phone. Three, download the PushPay app and search for David Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. And four, you may mail in your giving to our church address 2211 East Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, Austin, Texas, 78702. When we give, our offering helps meet the needs of the community, aids in providing benevolence, and invests in the spiritual development of our children and youth. Our giving honors God and enables us to further our mission as a church with a heart for the community. Thank you, and God bless. To allow our worship and our praise to flow to him, to flow to who he is. He is king, he is Lord, he's amazing, he's awesome, there's no one like him in all the earth. And the more that we praise him, the more our spirits swell with his goodness, with his, with his love and with his comfort. The more that we praise him, like the rivers swell when it rains, our spirits swell with joy with thanksgiving, with peace, with strength, whatever you need. 
when you're faced with an obstacle, if you just find a way to say, thank you, Jesus, or Lord, I praise you, you'll start to feel better. That's what worship is. That's what praise is. When I'm faced with an obstacle, I give him praise. No matter what's going on in my life, everything around me may be shaky, it may be confusion, but I find a way to worship him and I find a way to praise him and I find a way to press through until I feel much better. So if you just find a way to worship, find a way to honor him no matter what's going on. Find a way to honor him. That's where it is. That's where safety is. That's where peace is. That's where joy is. That's where strength is. That's where all you need is. Just find a way. Find a way. Find a way. Flow to you. Flow to you. Let the river of my worship flow to you.
joining us again for that's why we are here so that our worship on this Lord's day flow to the Lord and to God Almighty Matthew chapter 22 listen to the words recorded there starting with verse 15 ending with verse 22 Then the Pharisees went and plotted together how they might trap him in what he said. And they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are truthful and teach the way of God in truth and defer to no one, for you are not partial to any. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to give a poll tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their malice and said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the poll tax. And they brought him a denarius and he said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said to him, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Then render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And hearing this, they were amazed, and leaving him, they went away. I have a question for you today. Whose is this? Living our lives is like perpetually asking the question, Whose is this? The this to which I refer is everything you have or everything you influence. It is about ownership. It is about stewardship, possession, and the use of everything that you have. That includes your money, your attitude, your life, those material and immaterial things that you possess. The answer to this question should be given by the Lord. 
at least for those of us who are his people. The God-desired answer is to whom should we give or render for ownership, for stewardship, for possession, for their use, or out of our duty? You see, when Jesus had this encounter in our scripture and he was in the temple, it comes at census time in Palestine. It was time that involved a register valuation of property in accordance with which taxes were required by the Roman government to be paid yearly. The religious leaders and persons who were supporters of the Roman government that occupied Palestine but opposed Jesus plotted to set a trap for him. For they had heard him teach in the temple and the record says that he had been teaching them parables. They believed that they could get him to show either sympathy with Rome or rebellion against Rome by asking him to show or to tell whether it was lawful or not to give a poll tax to the emperor. But he busted them, calling them hypocrites, which also meant they were persons who professed beliefs and opinions that they really did not hold, but they pretended so that they could conceal their real feelings or motives. You see, fundamentally, our lives are about that as well. Every day we live in response to the question, Who gets this payment? Whose is this? I believe Jesus answers that for us by saying that whoever gets your allegiance, it's theirs. You see, before Jesus answered, he asked them to show him the coin used to pay the poll tax. They brought the coin to him. And looking at the coin and holding the coin, Jesus asked whose likeness and whose encryption is this? This was an allegiance question. They answered, it is Caesar's likeness and Caesar's inscription. You see, in those days, each ruler minted his own coins and put his image on them, but, there, but not all coins that were in circulation at that time carried the ruler's image. There were other coins that were circulating as part of their economy, but here, this coin had Caesar's image and Caesar's inscription words or letters that had been carved into the coin or engraved on the coin that everybody could see when they would handle or hold the coin. This was Caesar's coin. Therefore, Jesus, putting them in the place of a, a, an allegiance answer, said, well, therefore, this coin you give to Caesar." For the principle is, give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and give to God the things that are God's because those are the ones to whom you owe allegiance. Today we live in a time when there are competing powers and influences that vie to own us, that want to sway us and capture our allegiance, but the Bible says that God's image 
is on all humankind and everything, Psalm 24 says, belongs to the Lord. Therefore, the Lord's likeness and inscription should be on those who are his followers in particular, showing that we understand that God owns us and that we give God our allegiance in everything that we possess in every area in which we have influence. And when we recognize that, we are saying to the world and to ourselves that God's ownership means that God will not forsake us. God will provide for us. But some of us don't like God's ownership. Just like the NBA star, Alonzo Mourning, he said that on one occasion that when the Charlotte Hornets were under a new ownership, and they made some decisions, went in a direction that he did not like. He said, I was not pleased with the new owner. Somebody right there, you came to the Lord, you gave him new ownership of your life, but now that you have become more informed and aware of what is required under the Lord's ownership, you are not pleased, and so you rebel against it. So the question for you is, who gets your allegiance then? You see, daily we have a loyalty test. We may divide our budget and time but we never divide our allegiance to God. There's no 50-50, 75-25. Whatever percent you want to give, we don't give an allegiance to something even like the flag of America. I'm seeing in these days, there seems to be those who are more loyal to the flag than they are to the Lord. I'm talking to those who are my brothers and sisters in Christ. Here's your question. Whose image do you bear? Whose inscription is on your life? Whose is this? Whoever gets your allegiance. Whose is this? Whoever gets your allocation. Look at what Jesus does in this story. Jesus connects obligation with the coin's image and inscription. The man who handed him the coin says that this is one of my allocations. Jesus did not reach in his pocket. He asked them, hand me the coin. It was a coin that they had been allocated. And so the question they presented in their effort to trap him was, is it permissible? That's what they mean when they say lawful. Is it permissible to give it? That's what you and I ought to do every day with everything that we have in our lives. We must first of all ask the Lord, is this permissible to give? We must show him the coin, whatever it is in our life, everything that we have, every influence that we have, we show it to him. We hand it over to him for his guidance and for his direction, and he will tell us it's Caesar's or not. Here's, here's the principle. So, Pharisees, so Herodians, you got this coin from Caesar? So give it back to Caesar. God gives you permission. What you get from God, give back to God. For from him and through him, the Bible says, are all things that he gives and all that he receives is already his. That's what we must recognize. So the Bible raises this question. What, what do you have that you did not receive from God? And we can become 
short-sighted when we do not live as if all of our possessions are gifts from God and that God owns everything that we have. God never surrenders his rights as the primary owner. So when Jesus presented this question or answer to them, he assumes God's control even over Rome's earthly power. And even though the emperor's image and inscription is on the coin that indicates that it would be permissible, permissible to pay it back to him. Jesus shows that we can render. Render means to pay back. It's bigger than give. It means you recognize that you got it from that person and you are rendering it back. What shall I render to the Lord for all I have received and benefited from? He says, you can give to others if you keep your priorities straight. 1996, we had a member by the name of Helen Wilson who is a poet. And she has written a number of poems, and they are throughout our building frame. She wrote a poem that was entitled, is entitled, Down to My Last Dime. Here are Helen's words. I set aside money for the mortgage and for transportation here and there. By the time I had budgeted for food, I knew I wasn't getting anywhere. Nevertheless, I kept stretching my paycheck to cover utilities and the grocery bill. Then I set aside insurance money just in case I took ill. After budgeting all of my paycheck, I was left with a dime for miscellaneous fees. Realizing the mistake I had made, I fell down on my knees. I readjusted my budget, anticipating a blessing heaven sent. And unlike in previous times, I first set aside the Lord's percent. This time when I got to the end of the list, I had dollars above a dime. Knowing where all of my blessings come from, I'll move closer to the window next time. He opens the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. As Helen raised, whose dime is that you have? Whose coin, your life, your possession, immaterial, material, your influence, whose dime is that? Another question she raised, whose percent is that? Whoever gets your allocation is whose it is. Whose is this, your coin, your percent of your life, your possession, whoever gets your allegiance, whoever gets your allocation, and whoever gets your adoration. This coin was a tribute to Caesar, a poll tax. It was, in some translations, appropriately uh, translated as tribute money. Meaning that when they gave that coin, it was showing respect to Caesar, admiration to Caesar, submission to Caesar, and dependence on Caesar. So, when Jesus said, since you got this coin that bears his image and inscription, you obviously got it from Caesar, even though I permitted it. 
surrender the adoration of this coin to him. Give back what is rightly due to Caesar. But make sure that you also give it back to God. Pay your taxes. Thank you, Lord, for giving me the money to pay my tribute money to the earthly leader you have provided. But I recognize I am honoring you. Here's it is. Here it is. Whoever you got it from, give it back to them. You have your life, you have your breath, your strength, your influence, opportunities, your job, your retirement. Render it to God regularly. What can you do each day? Day that demonstrates that you recognize that everything and all that you have is God's. Contentment, peace, joy, not stressing out, even though your circumstance might dictate that you should, complaining because you are isolated, that you are in home. Did you hear what I say? In home, you got a roof over your head, you're not homeless on the street, you're not standing in the food line, but even if you are in the food line, somebody is still providing food for you, even if you're under a tent, somebody's providing a tent from you. Whose is this? Whoever's likeness and is inscription is on your coin is the one to whom you should give adoration and the more of God's image and inscription we have, the more we render. And only as you and I attain God's image and inscription on us shall we truly render to him what we know is due him. God says, give what you are duty bound. Ah, we don't use that in the church today, but the old saints or even those who were who are my age and remember in their childhood would hear the old saints of their day talk about duty bound to give even to Caesar because the Bible says that God ordains even government. So I close with this. Show the Lord your tribute money. Show, show the Lord your coin and your percent. Hmm. Down to your last dime, whose is that? So here's how you answer it. Be honest with yourself and say, whose likeness, whose inscription is on my life, on my time, on my influence, on my money, right. on everything that I have. This is how I resolve it. All I have is yours. What I have may not be much in the eyes of someone else. It, it might even be limited by human frailties, but, but whatever I have, I give back to you. What, what, what I give may not be measured with the best. It may not be much when others see it, but I give it back to you, God. I give you my feet so I can walk in your way. I give you my mind so you can speak to me about your way. And so you can instruct me <clears throat> how to pray. I give you my heart so you can Fill it with your love. 
I give to you my whole soul to do well for you. So I give to you all that I have, not, not because I want any glory. I, I, I give you every gift that you have given me, not so that I can brag about, look at me, but I recognize each and every day, every gift you have given me of whatever kind it is, it comes from you. I didn't deserve it for whatever reason. You chose me to gift me with this. No praises do I claim. No glory do I claim. All that I have, Lord, I give to you. And therefore, <laughs> I say hallelujah. The highest praise, I say Hallelujah, because everything is yours. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There you are. You need to make sure that you are his. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. And then it is incumbent upon you to recognize that everything is his. Are you certain right now that if you were to go home, die today, that you would go there? I was talking yesterday with my mother, who will be 103 years old in December. And mama and I were talking. And mama said, Joseph, I just want to make sure that I go to heaven when I die. What about you? The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. Come on, we receive you today. I'd love to be your pastor. We've had others who have joined us during this COVID period. We present that to you if you want us to pray for you. Fill that out in the form if you want it confidential. Put that there too and we will pray with you if you join us, if you need to be contacted. We've got a team that's already in place that will reach out to you. Come on! Keep praising the Lord with us and answer the question for yourself. Whose is this?
There is no dispute, there is no challenge to that statement that God deserves everything that we have. Let me pray with you and give you a benediction. Oh, merciful God, our Father, we hear you raising the question from this text to each of us today, whose is this? We ask, oh God, that we are reminded that everything is yours. And I pray, oh God, that if there might be one within the sound of my voice who's struggling right now, trying to give you your dime, trying to give you your percent, trying to give them all that they have, I pray that you will convict them with the Holy Spirit. I pray that they will come to an understanding, a conviction that it is all yours and, and that we render it back to you. I pray, oh God, now that you will hear the prayer request of those who are in their homes or wherever they might be listening to us participating in this worship experience. And yes, oh God, even this worship we give to you. Yes, oh God, even this glory we give to you. Yes, oh God, everything that we have, our sickness, our, uh, our grief, our sorrow, our challenges, our anxieties, our problems, our despair, we turn it over to you. Handle it, Lord. Handle it, Lord. Take it, Lord, because you are able to handle anything that comes into our lives. You are, you are still able to do far beyond what we can imagine or think. Take it, Lord. I'm putting it at your feet right now. I'm taking it, Lord. All that concerns me, I'm taking it, Lord, and giving it to you. I'm giving you all the glory, all the praise, all the honor. In the name of Jesus, we give it to you. And we thank you. Make yourself known to whoever is listening now. Comfort them, strengthen them, hold them up on every leaning side, put a hedge of protection around them, and as they draw to you, oh God, grant them what they need. So we say in the words of Peter, a final blessing, let us grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory now and forevermore. Hallelujah. time.